stepping into the room fashionably late with my Fenty hair review. Hello everyone, Kayla here and this is What The Kink, a natural hair channel where I don't do product reviews like this very often but lately the products have been producting so we've been needing to do these kinds of videos. Okay, so let me like give you the lowdown on the products that will be included in this particular video because I'm not someone who's gonna buy the whole line just to buy the whole line. I'm gonna buy some stuff that actually fits into my regimen or like makes sense for me to be using. So the first thing is I did get the Rich One um, shampoo. I also got the Rich One moisture repair conditioner. And then I also picked up the Richer One moisture repair deep conditioner. And then last I have here for the styler, I have the home curl curl defining cream i did not pick up uh that i can think of off the top of my head i did not pick up the comeback kid repair treatment thing i don't regularly use those kind of treatments in my regimen and then i did not pick up the gel because it was very much giving like uses for a slick back uses for a bun or something and i don't do gel slick backs you guys can check out my bun video that was put up not that long ago to see how i actually do achieve my buns and then um, I didn't pick up the edge control because what it like I, I never lay my edges like <laughs> any laying you may see is just because that's how I laid overnight when I tied my hair down for bed and <laughs> I literally go through with my nails and do like that in the morning if I need to. I'm not an edge girl and then they had a tool which is a really nice seemed to be pretty good quality edge brush but again I don't do brushes um I, I don't do edges so there was no need to do an edge brush when I do actually brush and smooth my hair the edges get brushed right back in the rest of the hair <laughs> I am so anti cute hair, natural girl type stuff that people be doing I just be like girl who cares <laughs> so I did not cop those additional products but there are many many lovely natural hair colleagues here who have done reviews that feature those particular products okay so let's take a talk about the price first thing so the shampoo and the conditioner are 10 ounces a piece and the deep conditioner is 11 and a half ounces and all three of these products retail for $29 now that brings you up to $2.90 for these bad boys per ounce and that makes this conditioner $2.52 per ounce now the cream styler is also 11 and a half ounces however it is a dollar less in price if I got this correct which makes it $28, which makes it $2.43 per ounce. So it's slightly cheaper um, per ounce, which is cool. These products, I wouldn't say they're the most expensive. Uh, I've tried things that are about $4, $5 an ounce. Y'all know, y'all have seen it. Um, but I wouldn't say it's like super cheap or whatever, like somebody finna go into Walmart and pick them up. Um, they're very much giving, the price is very much giving, we are a makeup company. <laughs> It's very much giving I walked into Sephora and picked this up right next to where people are picking up their Fenty gloss bombs. Okay, <laughs> that's what the pricing is giving. Um, it, the, the, the pricing is pretty comparable to other brands that are sold in Sephora and stuff like that. Um, so the pricing is comparable to those. I, I really won't complain. Um, it's about what I expected. Um, yeah, I would say treat yourself if this is something that's like out of your budget to regularly use. Maybe this ain't your regular use shampoo. This is something you pick up at nine and then. Okay, um, so let me talk about a couple of things that are like universal before we actually get into the individual products. So first of all, let's talk about the scent. This is what they say for the scent. I'm gonna have to read this. They say warm, ambery floral fragrance that drips you in notes of sparkling yuzu, golden amber, soothing florals, indulging vanilla, and creamy sandalwood. Now, I am not a fragrance girly, so I don't know what half of that means. That means nothing to me. When I smell these overall, they kind of smell like perfume. However, a not super alcohol forward perfume. And I would say a slightly younger woman's perfume. This isn't giving grandma's perfume. This is like cool auntie's perfume. And, I, and I'm not just saying that because I am a cool auntie. Yes, I'm four people's auntie. One of them is 22 years old. The rest of them are toddlers to babies. <laughs> so I'm a cool auntie. And so this is like a cool auntie scent. You know what I mean? It's a little powdery, little sweet, um, that kind of stuff. And I don't like perfume and I don't like powder and I don't like florals. So I actually enjoy this scent despite that. Now I will say that each product has 
a slightly different variation of the scent going on. They don't all smell exactly the same. So like for instance, the shampoo has a slightly soapy under hint to the fragrance. Whereas I noticed that the um, two conditions are similar but I felt like this one was slightly more a sweeter variation. There's something a little bit more sweet going on in the mask. And then the home curl, the variation of the scent is also different. I feel like the lotion-y element of it comes, comes through a little stronger when it comes to the home curl styling cream. So yes, the, the scents are definitely sisters but not the twin type of sisters. They don't all smell exactly the same. I did see something recently from a, another hair brand that was like, you really can't have all the products smell exactly the same because the ingredients have scents. And so it changes the variation of the scents just a little bit. And I feel like that's probably what's going on for, like for instance, especially with that home curl having that lotion-y scent underneath, that might be something to do with the ingredients in the product kind of having a scent as well. They have a couple of overall promises like as a group of products so I'll share with that with you as well. So powered by Replenicore 5 to repair split ends, reduce breakage for thicker looking hair. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> ain't nothing gonna repair, repair your split ends with some scissors but you know I, I get it marketing. Go on ahead with your bad self. Universal must have that repair split ends, reduce breakage and strengthen. Intense moisture hydrates and nourishes dry damaged hair. Hair feels smoother, silkier, and improves shine. And then I did make some overall comments about um, the, 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 the products in general. So first of all, I thought it was very nice packaging. I did not know, I didn't do enough research to know that these are aluminum bottles. I didn't know that. I didn't know that until I took them out of the box after I had bought them already. So yeah, aluminum. And then I like that, um, I like that the two conditioners match. That's cute, they're the same color. I love these pastel colors. And then they all have like little textures on the top. The conditioners have the same one. Um, we have these vertical ridges. Let me cover my face, there we go. On the shampoo. And then they have like this like curved beach looking design on the top of the curl cream. And I'm assuming the other stylers have a similar top as well because they have the same color. And then all of the tubs are pop top tubs. They pop open very satisfyingly and then there's kind of like a matte finish kind of touch to these um so I thought the packaging was very very nice one thing I would have preferred is I would have preferred the instructions for each product to be listed out on the actual product because they have these like pictures that show you and then a QR code if, and it takes you to the website. So yes, I've seen some people see that as a pro because it's always gonna be up to date. You can just change what it says on the website and on the sales page. But for me, I'd rather it be on my product because if I'm staying in the shower, I'm like, hmm, let me see what I need to do. I'm not gonna be trying to go scan a QR code when I'm standing in the shower. I'm not one of those people who brings my phone in the shower. I do know people who do that, but I'm not one of those people. So just, just put it on a product for me, girl. Oh, and I wanted to make these other notes that I forgot about the whole product line. Number one, all the products are vegan. That's why they're here on my channel because I am a vegan. Vegan literally just means animal free, okay? And animal testing free. All the other stuff that, that, that consumers attach to that meaning, they know that you attach those things to the meaning, but literally to, the, to its core, to the bottom of the floor, what it really means is just animal free. And the second thing I want to note also is that none of these products have heavy ingredients very high up on the ingredients list. So none of this stuff is gonna like really weigh down your hair or give you that like coated feeling. And I know some people prefer that feeling. You're not gonna get that with these Fenty hair products or at least not the ones that I've tried. Okay, so up first, let's talk about the, the Rich One Shampoo. The texture on this bad boy, she is thick, okay? One pump, a generous amount of shampoo comes out. It is a very gel-like shampoo. It bursts into lather. The lather that you get is very, very rich, just like it's called the rich one. It's a very rich lather. It's very buttery, velvety. Um, it definitely is not a stripping shampoo. I felt like after two lathers that my hair was clean, but it still was moist. And it tends to be usually the products, not that they necessarily are marketing towards natural hair with this, but usually when things are marketed towards black women, it's usually a moisture shampoo. And so this is definitely, I would give this a moisture formulation, but my hair was very clean. So this would be something that you could use as like on a weekly basis. Ingredient call outs we have here for the first five. Water, sodium, cocoyo, isotheanate, which is a cleanser. Sodium, laurel, methyl, isotheanate, which is another cleanser. 
Laura Glucoside, which I believe is another cleanser, and then Dystherith 75 IPDI. I'm not familiar with that particular ingredient. But yeah, I believe it may also be a cleanser as well. And then it has a bunch of like extracts and stuff like that going on. So it definitely gets your hair clean, but it doesn't strip it at all. And I appreciate it for that. As I said earlier with the scent, it has like a soapy variation of the fancy whatever proprietary scent that they've got going on. Okay, so on my first initial wash day that I did with this, the first product that I used was the richer one, um, Deep Conditioner. So we'll talk about that one and then we'll come back and talk about the rich one conditioner because I use it on a different wash day because I would not double condition. That's just not the thing that I do over here on this channel. I've seen some of y'all do it. That's cool if it works for you, but for me, I'm just like, why? <laughs> so the richer one deep conditioner, um, this texture of this is like in between. It's not super thick. It's not super thin. Um, it's just in between the two textures, okay? Ingredients for the first five. Water, cedar alcohol, ethyl oleate, glycerin, and then we have isoamyl laurate. And so these are ingredients, a lot of these I recognize as being ingredients in other conditioners. Um, note, again, there's nothing heavy up here in the top few ingredients. And then there is uh, nothing like protein-y or whatever. So everything is, it, the proteins are in these products, but they're not super high up on the ingredients. So I would consider these to be mostly moisture-based products that have protein ingredients, making them easier to use on a regular weekly basis instead of like a treatment, right? So when it comes to the use of this, I did not apply heat with this because after I scanned the QR code and got the directions, <laughs> it does not ask you to apply heat or sit with any other time. In fact, I feel like the directions for this could have been more specific. It was kind of just like, let it sit for a little while and take it out. Like, it's very much giving rinse out conditioner directions or like instant conditioner directions. You know, the conditioner that you would use right after you, you know, whatever, that's not a deep conditioner. That's very much what this is like. Um, as far as the slip of this product, the richer one is the employee that comes to work. She's on time, okay? She does her job and she clocks out on time. She is not doing a single lick of extra work and you can't complain because the work that she's supposed to do, she did. That's exactly how I felt about this conditioner. So I was able to detangle my hair. I was able to do everything that I needed to do. Um, I will say that usually a part of my process is like dabbing a little bit of water on my hair after I've done the initial application. And then I'll see if it's the right texture or the whatever that I need. And I'll add more product if necessary. And a lot of times adding more product is not necessary. But with this richer one, I did. It, it felt like I, like, that suddenly the, the, the texture had rinsed off. Like the slick coating I was getting rinsed off. It kind of felt, even with the tap of water. So I did have to add more product. But luckily, in the end, I didn't really end up using as much product, even though I feel like I was being a little bit more generous than I would normally be. So yeah, I, I'm able to do what I need to do with this. Am I jumping out of the window for it? No, but did it work? Eh, yeah. Um, and also when I rinsed it out, let me add that when I rinsed it out, my hair felt soft, but not like that slick coating that some people would probably prefer. So some people will register this as their hair being dry, but for me, my hair just felt soft and only soft without any type of slick coating. So there's that. move on to the home curl okay so I usually just use curl creams as just like something to coat my hair and not really for actually providing hold you know what I mean that's not really my thing however this does actually include ingredients that provide hold in the top five if I remember correctly we got water glycerin polyquaternium 37 isopropyl palmitate and hydrolyzed vegetable protein so i believe the polyquat here is something that may provide hold and i think there was something else in here too i think there's a pv i don't know or maybe i made it up there's another polyquat a little bit further down but yeah like i'm saying there are some ingredients that provide hold but you do have glycerin really high up i do live in a humid area it's humid here most of the year so it does make it a little bit more 
uh, dicey to use something like this. So what I decided to do upon the first use, because there's multiple uses of this, the first use, um, I decided to use it uh, to do twist that turned into a twist out. Again, this is not usually a product that I would use for that, but I decided to go for that because I felt like it would be the safe route. Um, and then I saw some other people do reviews and they did twist outs and I felt like their hair looked nice. Um, when I dipped my hand in here to do the twist out, okay, this thing is, is, is creamy, but has some sort of like tact and thickness to it that you definitely, it definitely feels like this is a styler. Like if you didn't tell me what this was and, and you were just like, hey, Kayla, put your hand in here. I would definitely be like, yeah, this is a styler. It definitely has a styler type texture and it distributes very nicely through the hair, smooths very nicely. Distribution is on 10 for this product. Very nice. Um, I did my twist. Yes, the clip is me standing in the shower with me twisting my hair, but that was just because I didn't want to move the, the camera setup. You can see that I had changed them to my regular clothes. I just, I did a couple twists for you guys and then hopped on out of that bad boy, okay? <laughs> but anyways, um, I did a set of twists and uh, the results were pretty nice for the twist. These are the results of my hair with the home curl. It is day four since I did my hair. And I would say it's holding up pretty well, it's still very soft. And about the softness, my hair has remained soft the entire time, so it started soft. So it took a little bit of a time for it to dry originally. Definitely if I was like a twist out immediately type person or twist out the next day type person, this definitely would not have been able to produce a twist out because my hair would have still been damp, but I'm someone who usually wears my twists for several days before I take them out. Now, it was soft when it did dry and it's still soft now. So I'm kind of nervous about there being a certain level of hold to this product, but we are going to give it a try and see what happens. So far, so good. I'm not mad about my twist results. If it doesn't do a twist out, we still got something out of it. All right, so these are the twists taken out super fresh. Of course, always twist outs kind of lean on the technique of the twist out originally anyway so they're always going to hold at least you know a couple hours a day or whatever just because of the technique of the twist and all that kind of stuff so we'll really see the effects of the product after a couple of days um i'm gonna wash my hair on friday as i normally would today is tuesday so i'm going to just show this before i uh, film the rest of this Fenty video because we got another product that we need to test out and it was one that I wouldn't naturally use on the same day as everything else that I've already shown in this video. Oh and I do want to add that I did get a little bit of snow when I was taking this down but I mean that's what you get if you if you do your twist with like um, something that isn't intended for flexible hold like a gel or something like that and this is a cream that has a hold agent in it that kind of stuff, the gel cast kind of breaks a little when you're taking it down and it does create a little bit of flaking. But I mean, when I say it's offensive to the point where I wouldn't use this product, no, it wasn't that much. And that might be it. Like literally I might not have any more after doing that. So then from there, I turned it into a twist out. Now, twist out looked pretty good until about day three. Now, earlier in the day on day three, which is when I was going to wash my hair, it looked still good. I even went out, ran a couple of errands, and it started to mist a little bit. I let my hair intentionally get misted on. The front frizzed a little bit, but again, looked overall pretty good. Well, then my husband wanted to go out to the market that they have here on the weekend, and it was raining like crazy. I'm talking, I had my umbrella, torrential downpour, and when we were out there for that, that is when um, I experienced my hair just fully just puffing all the way out. And so what you see in the clips is the beginning of day four in the morning before I was going to wash my hair. You can see that it has fully puffed and poofed out because this just could not stand up against the humidity. Okay, and so I had to do a completely different wash day for um, the other conditioner because again, as I said earlier, it's not something that I would use like normally, like back to back. So what I did was I shampooed with the Rich One shampoo, of course, and then I conditioned with the Rich One conditioner. This is their rinse out conditioner, 
okay so this the texture of this one it very much is like a, a lotiony type consistency it's not thick at all it comes out of this pump like a dream because it's not a very thick consistency and the first five ingredients are water cedar alcohol glycerin behitrimonium chloride and brassica metapropyl dimethylamine again these are things that i've seen in um or variations of things that i've seen in conditioners um and so as a typical conditioner formulation uh, i felt like as i was using this one i was using a lot of product i would say that my application of how i apply whatever i'm going to tangle my hair with or condition my hair with is pretty routine i've got it down to a science I, I tend to use the same amount of product every single time no matter what the product but with this looking in the bottle after the fact i think i used like a third of this bottle and it's only a 10 fluent ounce meaning i used probably three ounces 3.33 ounces which is a little bit more conditioner than i would normally use but again, with the whole, once I had water, I felt like there wasn't enough product on my hair and it wasn't giving me that texture that I need. Now, afterwards, did I get the slip? Yes, I'm always going to get the slip. I feel like the way that I apply my conditioner makes most conditioners have great slip after you do that. So yeah, I got it. But again, it has slightly, it, it came and it did its job, but it has slightly less slip than the richer one conditioner. So it's not something that I would be, you know, going crazy for and like I got to go to the store and get this. Probably not. Okay. Uh, let's be real. Absolutely not. Um, she, she did what she was supposed to do. Box checked, hair conditioned. <laughs> One thing I will say that was different was the rinse out on this though. The rinse out on this did have a little bit of a slickness to the hair in addition to the softness and not just my hair being soft so i think that the way that this rinses out would be preferable to some people but you have to get through the application and the detangling before you can get to the rinse out feel now of course i did come back into the home curl again for this wash day to do something different i saw some content online um particularly from javon ford if you're not familiar with him he's a cosmetic chemist and it was showing how this particular product doesn't mesh well with a lot of gels due to the difference in charge between what's providing hold in here versus what's providing hold typically in gels and so people have been trying to mix it on their hand and mix the two textures together and it's like clumpy and like cottage cheese cheesy and if it's like that in your hand oftentimes your hair will have like a cast or it will um it'll flake when you put it on the hair so people were like oh i'm not gonna do that combo Ooh, girl right so um what he did find did work was foam foam did actually provide some sort of good mixture now i know foam is not a strong hold um i have like three foam options here to choose from but i chose the Mish set gel to foam because first of all i didn't think the scent would would clash with it second of all i do use it for other hairstyles i felt like it had a decent amount of hold and they always advertise it as a wash and go styler type situation on their tiktok um, and I, I think the only other thing that would have had stronger hold is the pattern beauty foam, but I feel like the scent on that would really clash with this <laughs> and it would cause issues. So I, I decided not to do that one. So put it on the hair, coated it beautifully. We got something going on as far as washing go. Again, this has really great spreadability. Just in general, it has great spreadability. Um, applied the foam with no issues. My hair dried and you know what guys? It dried beautiful. The results were so beautiful. Now I would not typically come back the very same day that I styled and dried my hair because I do like to tie my hair down and give it a chance to kind of lay a little bit more in the front and my hair tends to look better after I've taken it down. But I do intend to go outside. The weather is really crappy here lately. So it's really muggy and humid and I just know that this is not going to last. But I don't know if you guys can pick it up. 
but the definition is so great. I, I really like this. I like the volume of my hair. My hair is soft. My hair dries soft without product. That's just a, a fact of my hair. However, this level of softness is like a buttery softness. A there's product softness that has been added to my hair. There are some damp spots on the ends like here where it probably should dry a little bit more, but I'm not gonna continue to sit on the dryer and bother myself with it. So I'm loving the shape and the volume of it. And uh, I just don't feel like it's gonna be humidity resistant, which of course in later clips, we will find out if this lasted or not. But let me tell you, it was a one day wash and go. I wore my hair down this, the next day. It still was wearable, but it started to expand and expand by the end of the next day. And then here's the day after that is when I'm filming this sit down video. And it is now a pony puff in the back. Now, I'm not going to wash it yet because my hair is still moisturized. I didn't say that around with the um, twist and twist out. But even after being exposed to humidity, the hair still felt moisturized. Because sometimes your hair gets exposed to humidity and then the hair feels dry afterwards just because everything was sucked out of it, right? No, like it's still moisturized. So I am not going to wash this. Because the whole point of, of washing our hair, yes, the style is a nice bonus, but you mainly want your hair hydrated and moisturized. Like that's that's the goal. So my hair still feels good. I, I like the sheen on it. It looks decent, but it wasn't a viable style. Now, another thing I could try, I might try mixing Imba Naturals with it, but again, it seemed like the, it really didn't want to get with a lot of gels. I haven't tried Imba, so I'm not saying that it doesn't work, but that might be something that could help get a look that's like what I got with this in the foam but that would stay because it, it really was beautiful it was a really nice wash and go it looked great um so yeah <laughs> let me give my final thoughts and reviews in the form of rankings okay so number one the product that I really like the most from this collection would have to be the rich one shampoo the lather on this is so nice the hair is moisturized, but not stripped. Clean, but not stripped is what I meant to say. Still moisture in the hair. This is a good shampoo, okay? Without depositing a bunch of like heavy stuff on your hair as well. So that's number one. But definitely purchase again. And I don't go through shampoo that often. So anyways, product number two would have to be the Home Curl Curl Cream. Um, it just spreads so nicely throughout the hair. The styles were nice initially. They just don't have the lasting power. So I would have to develop some, either either have expectations of it's just not going to last. Let's save this for January, February, or when I'm traveling somewhere that's not humid, or just like seeing if I can further cocktail with it because it does have a decent amount of product. Like I would say it looks like I've only used like a fourth, the top fourth of the product. There's plenty of product still in here because of how beautifully it spreads. I don't need to use a lot. So this is definitely product number two on my rankings. Now, of course, you know that the two conditioners are at the bottom. There, you know, I probably would not make it a point to go out to get either of these conditioners. And when my rinse out conditioner that I'm currently using is all done, I'm going to just sub these in as rinse outs until they're gone. That's how I'm going to use them up. So product number three on my ranking would have to be the richer one just because it has more slip. And I also did not use as much product. And when the products cost this much, it does matter how much you use. <laughs> so that's why I would give this one spot number three. And then I'm so sorry, spot number four, dead last, is just the Rich One Conditioner. It had less slip than the Richer One. I had to apply a lot of product. And at $29 a bottle, using a third of the product is just not ideal. I don't think I used that much of any of these other products. <laughs> I, I didn't go through nearly as much of these other products as I did of this particular one. And it's because the texture just did not have enough slip for me to be able to do what I need to do. And I know how I like my hair to feel. I style my hair based off feel. And if I don't have the right feeling, I'm going to keep applying product and water and water and product back and back and back. Until I can get the, the texture that I know is going to work and be able for me to... And enable me to do what I need to do. So, I'm sorry girl, you're at the bottom of the rung. I don't do product reviews all that often, especially not this in-depth type, 
but I'm going to link to the last one I did. Who knows how many years old that is. And I'll try to link another one right here. Subscribe. Stop searching for me every week. I know that's what you're doing. <laughs> Subscribe and I will talk to you in the next one.